Hi everybody, Music Theory 1, this is video number 13. In this video we're going to be talking about how to identify chords and label chords using Roman numerals. It's going to be a big step in developing our ability to understand harmony and put harmony into larger context. Roman numerals are a new step for us in, again, getting better at describing music and talking about music, and in particular talking about harmony in the pitch area of sound. Roman numerals allow us to do a couple things. They allow us to very efficiently describe the chord's quality, which is one thing we already know about. We know about the difference between major and minor triads. We know the difference between fully and half diminished seventh chords. Roman numerals also help us to identify a chord's inversion. We know that's important in talking about what note is in the bass, what note is the lowest in a chord. But Roman numerals do one other thing that we haven't really been able to do with the way we talk about chords yet, and that is identify a chord's place in the context of the music's key, of that major or minor key. Roman numerals give us the sense of how the chord fits into the big picture, and that is going to be a really, really, really important thing going forward. It might not seem like it now, but that's going to be very useful in putting together a big picture sense of harmony in music. Here's some chords that we might see in music, nothing too outstanding here. And notice that I've labeled them using one of our older ways to label harmony, that's lead sheet symbols, often designed for real-time reading in a performance. And so we've got a D major triad and an E minor triad, an A major triad and a B minor triad, all of these in root position. How might we label these using Roman numerals? That's going to be a question. Well, to do that we need to know how Roman numerals work. I'm going to give you some guidelines. Here we go. Whoa, that's a lot of text. Okay, let's talk about how to assign numerals. First thing we want to do is identify the name and the quality of the triad. And we've already been doing this a whole bunch. We want to figure out whether it's a C major triad or an A minor triad or a B flat diminished triad. Okay, we want to figure that out. Then we want to use a Roman numeral that matches the scale degree of the root. Okay, this is really important. We want to figure out what the root of the triad is, and we remember the root is that lowest note when the chords are stacked up in ascending thirds. Not, just, not necessarily what note is the bass note, but what note is the root of our triad. We're going to take the Roman numeral that matches the scale degree of the root. We're going to use capital or lowercase numerals depending on the quality of our chord. So capital numeral, numerals will go with major triads and lowercase numerals will go with minor triads. And we'll add a plus to our capital numerals for augmented triads and a little circle for low, with lowercase numerals for our diminished triads. And finally, we'll use base position symbols to indicate the inversion of our chord. We're doing a whole bunch of stuff drawing on our earlier videos here. I'm talking about inversion, I'm talking about chord qualities of triads, I'm talking about a lot of things that I'm assuming you're already somewhat familiar with. Remember, if you ever need to review those older concepts, the movies are right there for you to watch again. Okay, so this is a whole bunch of stuff. If you want to take notes, go ahead and pause it and write these down. But I'm going to go ahead to the next slide and show you how we put this in action. Roman numerals always work within the context of a key, and so I have to know what key my music is in to put them in there. Uh, I've got two sharps here, and so I am in using the D major scale. And so if I want to assign a Roman numeral for this D major triad, I have to ask myself, what is the scale degree of the root? Well, the root of this D major triad is D, and in the D major scale, D is scale degree 1, and so I'm going to use a Roman numeral 1 for this chord. Because it's a major triad, I'm going to write a capital one. And because it's in root position, I'm going to use the abbreviated base position symbol for root position, which is nothing at all. So I'm just going to write a capital Roman numeral one, and that's going to tell me this is the one triad, a major one triad, a tonic triad named after that first scale degree. What about the next one? Again, I ask myself, what is the root of this chord? And then what scale degree is that root? Well, this is an E minor triad. The root is E. And in the D major scale, E is scale degree 2. It's the second scale degree, the supertonic. This means I'm going to use a Roman numeral 2 for my E minor triad. 
And because it is a minor triad, I'm going to use a lowercase Roman numeral 2. I'm going to write two small i's there to indicate that we've got a minor 2 chord. Again, because we're in root position, I'm, not, I'm going to indicate the inversion by having the base position symbol for root position, which again is no base position symbol at all. Lazy, lazy notation right there. What about the next one? We've got an A major triad. What scale degree is A, the root of the chord, in the major scale of D? What scale degree is A in D? That's going to tell us what numeral we need. Well, A is scale degree 5, and so we're going to use a Roman numeral for scale degree 5, capital V. Capital because it's major, and 5 because A is the fifth scale degree. Okay? And I added the Roman numeral for B minor as well. Again, same question. What scale degree is the root? Well, the root is B, and B is the sixth scale degree of our D major scale. I can count up from D, D, E, F, G, A, B, and get up to number six. I use lowercase again to indicate that it's a minor chord. This is going to be my practice whenever I'm identifying a chord using a Roman numeral. If we add inversions to these chords, we would add some different base position symbols. Let's do that really quickly just to show you how things might get changed up. Okay, I've shuffled around the notes. Notice that I did not change the actual types of chords. We still have a D major, E minor, A major, and B minor chord here, but I have changed the inversions by moving around which note was on the bottom. Notice that my numerals did not change. I still have a capital one, a lowercase 2, a capital 5, and a lowercase 6. That's because, again, the roots of these chords is not different. The roots have stayed the same. I've just changed the inversion of the chord, and I'm using my base position symbols to indicate those inversions. So for my D major triad, my 1 triad, now I have the third of the chord, the F sharp, in the bass. And to indicate that, I've added a 6. 6 is the base position symbol, for a triad and first inversion. We remember this from our inversion video. Those were good times. What about that A major chord with E in the bass? E is the fifth of my A triad, A, C sharp, E. And so to indicate second inversion with the fifth in the bass, I've used 6-4, my bass position symbols there. Likewise, I've got my B minor chord at the end, now in first inversion, and so I've put a 6 on to indicate the inversion. Please do not forget this step. It's really easy to sort of figure out the name of the chord and throw the numeral down, but labeling inversion is critical, critical, critical. And so we always want to remember this is our last step. To help show just why these things are important, I want to show, take a quick look at a, a second excerpt of music placed underneath our first one. If we look at the notes, in the second piece of music, we might say, oh, well, it looks really different. It's got a bunch of flats in it, whereas the top one has a bunch of sharps. And as we look at the chord names, the lead sheet symbols, right, we see, oh, A flat major and B flat minor. And it feels very different from our first excerpt, excerpt which has D major and E minor and A major. But when we use our numerals, our numerals reveal some of the similarities between these excerpts. These chord progressions have the same Roman numerals, right? They both start on the one chord in first inversion. They both move to a two chord and then to a five chord and to a six chord. When we look at the names of the chords, when we look at those lead sheet symbols, this might not be immediately apparent. We might look at them and say, wow, these two things look really different. But the numerals say that in the context of the major scales in which they are founded, right, in the context of the major key that we're working in, these chord progressions are the exact same. This is why Roman numerals are important. They show us these similarities between musics that might look really, really different. Okay, just wanted to throw this up as an example for that. Let's talk really quickly about seventh chords and Roman numerals. Some bonus rules about using numerals to label seventh chords, okay? Most of this is going to be the same as triads. We're still going to identify the chord. We're still going to find the scale degree of the root to label it. But just some things about the different qualities here. Seventh chords based on major triads are going to get capital numerals. The major seventh will be labeled with an M7, whereas the major minor, or dominant seventh, is just going to use a seven after its numeral. 
seventh chords based on minor or diminished triads are going to get lowercase numerals. And diminished seventh chords will use either the circle for fully diminished or the circle with a slash for half diminished. And versions, again, are going to be indicated with our base position symbols. So again, we've got all those numbers to tell us the inversions that we're going to use. Okay, not that much changes with seventh chords when we're using Roman numerals, but we just have some more qualities to keep track of. Let's look at some music and put some Roman numerals on some seventh chords. Once again, I've started by labeling these chords with lead sheet symbols. I've already done some of the work for us. I've already identified the quality of these chords, the name and the quality. And so you can see I've switched keys, switched clefs around for us. We've got a string of seventh chords here in C minor, three flats, C minor. And you can see I've got some chords that I've borrowed from the harmonic minor scale. A C minor seven chord is here, a major seventh on E flat, a G seven chord with B in the bass, a D half diminished seven chord, and a B chord fully diminished seven there. When we're labeling with numerals, we're going to ask the same question, of course, scale degree of the root. And so if we look at our first chord, I ask myself, what's the root? Well, it's a C. And I ask myself, what scale degree is that C in our key of C minor? In this key, C is scale degree 1. And so we're going to use a 1 for that Roman numeral. Let's put it on. There it is. And because it's a minor 7th chord, I'm going to use a lowercase numeral, a lowercase 1. The base position symbol for a root position seventh chord is a seven. We remember that from our inversion talk. And so lowercase one seven, that's what we need to do for this chord. What about the next chord, E flat major seven with B flat in the base? What scale degree is the root? What quality is the chord? What inversion is the chord? Think about these things and see if we can't figure out how to label this chord. Okay, E flat is scale degree 3 in our key of C minor. C is 1, D is 2, E flat is 3. And so we need some sort of Roman numeral 3 here. This is a major 7 chord, and so it's going to be a capital 3. And I'm going to use that M to indicate that it's a major 7th chord. And finally, I need to label the inversion here. B flat is in the bass, and B flat is the 5th of our seventh chord to indicate a seventh chord in the second inversion, a seventh chord with the fifth in the bass, I need to use the bass position symbol 4-3. And so this is what my numeral will look like. 3 capital M 4-3. That's how we're going to do it, 3 capital M 4-3. Again, we're going to go through the same process for these last chords. Again, we can talk through it together. Scale degree of the root for a G7 chord, a dominant 7th chord. Well, G is scale degree, 1 is C, 2 is D, 3 is E flat, 4 is F, 5 is G. This is scale degree 5, and so it's going to be some kind of 5. It's a major minor 7th chord, and so it's going to be a capital Roman numeral. And finally, the inversion. B natural is in the base, and for my G7 chord, B natural is the 3rd. When we have a seventh chord in the first inversion with the third in the base, our base position symbol is 6 5. And so, 5 6 5 is what we're going to do. Remember, dominant seventh chords don't need anything, just a capital numeral and our base position symbol, whereas major seventh chords need that M. Okay. We've got two final chords, and I'm going to just bring up the numerals to show them rather than talk you through it. Here we go. Our D half diminished 7 chord is a 2 half diminished 7 chord, and our B fully diminished 7 chord is a 7 fully diminished 7 chord. As diminished chords, they both use lowercase numerals, and I've used the circle with the slash or the circle without a slash to indicate half and fully diminished respectively. This may seem like a lot, but in time we're going to get used to working through these quickly. As we start, remember to go through all the steps. Ask yourself the questions, right? What note is the root? What scale degree is that root? What is the quality of the chord? And based on that quality, what kind of numeral do I need to put in? Capital, lowercase, etc. Finally, don't forget inversion. Inversion can be your last step, but do make sure you take the time to put it in. Using Roman numerals is a big step. 
using Roman numerals, again, allows us to put harmony in context of music. It lets us look at a bigger picture, and that's going to be so important for us going forward, developing an understanding of how these chords tend to work together in a full piece of music. Today we reviewed how to use these Roman numerals, we reviewed the process. It's a multi-step process, and one that with practice we're going to get better at. It uses a bunch of the stuff we've already talked about. It uses knowledge of chord quality, which is based on knowledge of intervals, which is based on knowledge of key signatures. It uses our knowledge of inversion and how we're going to label those inversions. And so it's got a whole bunch of putting together of skills you've developed. We'll practice this more in class, but in the meantime, thanks for watching it with me, guys. Have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.